Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. It is a good evening, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all here. Yep. Yep. Any announcements tonight? Yes, Cheryl. Collecting Bibles. Anyone? Any other announcements? Oh, praise reports tonight. Praise reports. Let's hear them. Well, hello. Not all at once. Nobody praise me over anything. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get over this COVID stuff by now and start to come off that. Yeah. 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 Our daughter-in-law had a little bit of trouble last week after delivering as well as the baby, but uh, they're both home and she was, uh, they're not, she comes from a background where she kind of uh, walked away from a church a long time ago and our son hasn't isn't following the Lord either. But uh, in the course of chatting on, you know, a messenger with her, she said how much she really, they're just really happy, you know, have a family. And um, I said, yeah, God answered a lot of prayers last week, right? Because on the Renewed Strength Women's Group, I kept posting prayer needs. And she said, yeah, you're right. Which was a big admission because usually when I talk about prayer or, you know, anything, kind of like no comment you know we just change something or something so that was one of my prayers is that they will realize that god answered prayer on their behalf yeah so that's praise yes. Yes. good yes um i was um at a restaurant uh doing the bible study um with a friend today in urbana and a lady was at the register paying and all of a sudden, she just hunched over like she couldn't stand up. She could, she was trembling, and we went over and we were uh, just talking to her for a minute. And she said how much pain she was in, and she was having this issue that just hit her this morning. And we asked if we could pray for her. She went over to her table and sat down. And within probably five minutes, she stood up, and they were asking her. The, a nurse was there, and they said. How is your pain level? And she said, it's at a high 10. They almost called a squad. And after about four of us prayed for her and we asked permission to put our hands on her, she stood up and said her pain was at zero. Okay. It was absolutely zero. That's a good prayer. Yeah. They're all good. Some of them better than that. Uh, Any other prayer reports? How about prayer requests? 
Uh, my uh, son-in-law, Ryan Burroughs, his grandmother passed away unexpectedly yesterday from COVID. So if you can keep the family in your prayers. No. Um, there's a young lady that grew up with my daughter. Her name is also Mackenzie Cobalt. Um, she's a very, like, I was her other mother. Um, her mother passed away New Year's Eve. Um, they just thought she was resting, and when they went up to wake her up for to eat dinner, they realized she had um, passed away. So that is really hitting the family hard, and with COVID and everything, they're not even allowed to see the mother until they get a test result back to even do the process that needs to be done. So if we could keep the Cobalt family. Up um, we're going to pray for this visa process to finish. <laughs> um, I'm going through a lot of a test of patience. We'll say that. Um, we're also. I need prayer for just myself with the epilepsy. Um, I had a struggle this weekend. I've been suffering from migraines every day this week, and. They believe that if I continue to have them through the end of the week, I may need to see a doctor because one of them almost made me collapse. Um, had to have my mom come over and watch me. So they're getting a lot worse. Girls. Uh, my nephew, Wyatt Strickland, they found another mass. Um, and so he had uh, biopsy Monday and uh, he's waiting on the results. But uh, he's praying for healing yeah. so it won't be cancer so. um, the Andrews family they lost um, New Year's Eve her infant passed away um, he never just woke up in the morning so who he says I'm not sure yet but um, and her grandfather Lex Andrews is also suffering from COVID in the hospital he's not doing well at all yeah. mine's in an announcement not a prayer request but um we're going to do um, what's called painting with a purpose for young girls between 10 and um, 17 uh, on January 23rd. It's a Saturday from 5 to 8. Um, Mackenzie Fisher is going to be talking about anxiety and Ashlyn will be talking about um, how to deal with negative emotions in a healthy way. And then we'll have pizza and painting. So if you know of any young girls between 10 and 17 that would be interested, please give me a buzz. Let me know. It's free. Awesome. My mom has COVID. Please remember her. She's had a rough week and thought she was doing better and I called her. And she just really, really short of breath on when I called her today. So, Goldie Mabs. Hey, Joe. Joe up here. Uh, my father in law, he, uh, he had to be admitted to the hospital. He's got. Uh, some internal bleeding and he has pneumonia and uh, that was two nights ago and same situation we can't go see him or anything and he had a stroke a few years ago so he's kind of hard of speaking so Of this country 
think this man in power and wealth and success and, and make everything right rather than God. And I think we're just seeing the results of that. I just pray our country turns back to God. I don't, care that, I don't pray that they turn Republican or turn Democrat. I pray they turn back to God. I think we would all agree, better agree, <laughs> yes, sir. that I think you're a mess in this country. Amen. And the only answer is move of God. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Or whatever you want to call it, it's still got to be a move of God. Right. And pray every day for it. Every day. Many times a day. Pray for revival to come to this country because if it don't, we're going down to do. I hate to say it, but we are. No, you're right. Hey, 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 hey. So we're going up. We're not going down. We're going up. I'm talking about the country. Oh, I did not. We're going up. Yeah. You just wanted to get out of here, don't you? Let's go. Take a boat. Well, I think we better pray. Father, we thank you for this time tonight. We thank you, Lord, for each and every request. You heard them all. Many, many more. Each of us have unspoken requests tonight. And Lord, we do. We pray for this country. We pray, Lord, for your move of your spirit, Lord. We need revival in this country. It's been promised. So, Lord, we can't wait till it comes. We're going to pray every day for it to come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. In power, move like you never have before. It's been promised. Prophesied to the Lord. We thank it. We believe it. So be with us here tonight now. Joe Leaders and the group here on the platform leaders and worship to you. The marvelous you bring the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord takes broken things. He takes hard places and doesn't he uh, just carry us through those things and from graves and broken things and gardens. And, uh, so let's worship him. We know that he's the one that builds us.
today, and you know, sometimes we don't feel like praising, or we don't feel like worshiping, we don't feel like serving, but you know, the call upon our life doesn't really always matter what we feel, is it? Because we chose the Lord, and I am going to choose to praise Him. I am going to choose to lift my voice up and to honor Him, even if my body, my flesh doesn't feel like it. And that's what we have to do, is to learn to be overcomers and to do the thing that sets us free. Walk in those things, those disciplines, those things. Lord, we ask you to bring us to life. There's bad reports out there, Lord, but you are our good report. Sunday was silent, surely it was through. Since when was it possible? You have a sound of you. Friday's disappointment, Sunday's empty too. Since when was it possible? You have a sound of you. Yeah, this is the sound of the tribe on 
2019 had to overcome a lot of fear but isn't it funny that the Lord took us through it and now we're just a little bit braver aren't we we're braver Lord we're braver because we've seen that you're with us and Lord we know when we stand in your love that nothing can come against us no weapon formed shall prosper Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I know When brokenness and pain is all I know no, I won't be shaken no, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. place to hide I am not a captive to the light I'm not afraid to leave my past behind oh, I won't be shaken oh, I won't be shaken cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in
how we fight. This is how I fight my battles. We lift you up, God. You are worthy. This is how I fight my battles. Between you and God. Come on, let's praise him. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm Come on, praise him. Praise, praise him. You, Lord. Lord, we Hallelujah. acknowledge you as Lord of our life. We love you, Lord. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Even in the darkest times, you are with us. You hold on to us. And Lord, you go through the fire with us. Always with us, God. Lord, you're with us. Grace when my heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. Ever felt like you had some walls closing? When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, and I know I will never be alone. What's another in the fire? Standing next to me was another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? It's a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. It's another in the fire. To my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either 
the way, I won't bow to the things of this world. Oh no, I know I will never be alone. Be another in the fire, standing next to me. There is another in the waters, holding back the sea. Should I ever be reminded? Power set me free. There is a grave that holds no body, and that power lives in me. There's another in the fire.
Lord, I praise you that you're always with us. You don't leave us ever. Sometimes people are mean. And they're nasty. And the world's mean and nasty. And then sometimes I even am even mean and nasty. But the Lord's not. And don't let anyone tell you that he is. Lord, you're with us. You are with us always. But we praise you. Amen. Be with the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello there. Hello, hello. Stand on the stage here. We got some folks in the balcony and I the top of my head is not that exciting. So uh Hey, how you doing, okay? Hey, how you doing? You're doing okay? Man, oh man. Was that good? That was good worship. If you Listen, if your meter isn't working, I can't fix you right now. You know, if that didn't move your meter, I don't know what to say. I don't know. If that's all good. That's good stuff. That's the best of modern worship music brings, man. Right? Just turn loose and worship, right? Hey, uh, get into I I I love politics. I love studying all this stuff. I got a million opinions. Opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody's got them. L listen, let me give you some advice. If I can just give you, as a preacher, give you some advice. Right now is not the time to have a political discussion. It's time to have a spiritual discussion. Right? So don't turn your discussions with people into political discussions. It's time to have a spiritual discussion. Right? So don't mess up in your conversations with people because everybody's got an opinion, a political opinion. Right? But a spiritual discussion I think we can connect with them on with you know what I mean because everybody can see it's all a mess it's just all a mess right so what's our hope our hope isn't in Democrats or Republicans no 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 our hope is in Jesus it's always been in Jesus I told you that the sign of the Lord's coming and I'll tell you this until you get it if you look at the scripture I'm just to find a boil it down. The sign of the Lord's coming is trouble. Trouble. What? Oh. You want to win? Trouble. Trouble. Right? That's what the scripture says, right? The disciples say to him, you know, uh, so what is the sign of your coming in the end of the age that's what they say in Matthew 24 to him and he goes on this thing about nation against nation and and earthquakes and famines and pestilences seems like I'm forgetting stuff trouble trouble right trouble the reason for trouble hey is because sin brings trouble right and because of sin Troubles falling on people, upon nations, upon 
Okay? That is how God deals with trouble. What it, why he deals with that is so there will be repentance, right? So in our nation, God is bringing trouble because we've not stood for righteous things the church has. What, I'm, what I know is people under 35 years old, hey, are so very, very different than those over 50. I'm just telling you. There's a totally different thing. And, and the reason why is their parents didn't raise them in church. They didn't get none of that, right? Didn't get any of that. Didn't get any, you know. So they get these opinions that mean everything's okay. Did you catch the... The new Congress, did you catch the prayer? The new, you got to go look that up. The prayer at the new Congress, right? At the end, the mono, in the name of the mono something God, Allah, and something about the Father, and he, then he said, Amen, then he said, A woman. Did you catch that? Oh, you got to see that. The prayer, I forget what number Congress this is. But you got to look up the prayer of the opening of this, this Congress. I think it was on Sunday or Monday. But they actually said Allah. Anyhow. So, what's God going to do with that? You pray in Allah's name. On, on, on Wednesday, they come in your doors. Right? So, the Lord's coming back. You all hear me? The one guy very simply said, hey, Jesus ascended around 30 A.D., right? A day with the Lord's like a thousand years, a thousand years like a day. There's two New Testament days, the last days. Hey, that this thing, the whole thing could be over by 2030, 2,000 years after the Lord ascended. Does that make sense? Subtract seven-year tribulation off of that. I don't know how your triad math is. The Kumpsa math, the Kumpsa math says we don't have a whole lot longer. So here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. The world's going to be a mess. You're going to live in a world that's a mess, right? The Lord, the devil wants to bring division in the church, but the God is going to present to the Father a spotless, beautiful church, right? Thessalonians says there's going to be a great falling away. Who's going to fall away? Well, those that get offended, those that... Don't want to get along, those that want to bicker, those that want to complain, those that want to point fingers, those that want to, you know what I mean? But for the rest of us, we're going to be part of a spotless church that the Lord will present to the Father, right? Jesus is in the process of just getting his church where it needs to be. And I'm telling you, we're coming back around the clock to this age where everything you pray in the name of the Father... I'm going to point that out on Sunday. Be here Sunday. This whole idea, everything you ask in his name, he's going to do it for you. He's going to do it. That's what the scripture says, right? And we're living in an age again where the Lord is going to try to show who he is to the church, especially to the world through the church. The greatest days for the church are just ahead. I could stand here all day and tell you my political opinions. I've got a whole bunch. I watch news all the time. Connor, do I watch the news all the time? Every second. <laughs> every second I can, I'm watching news. Every kind of news channel, every kind of everything. I think it's cool to watch the news because I think it just tells me the Lord's coming. Okay? So we don't need to have big political discussions. We need to have Jesus discussions, right? Are you excited about the Lord coming? Do you realize in a couple of years the Lord can come? We just be out of here, right? The United States may be going down, but I heard a college professor tell me a bunch of years ago, a whole bunch of years ago, that for the Antichrist to come on the scene, America has to go down. For people to accept a one world government, the governments of the world have to fail. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. There's nobody true blue more than me. I'm 82 to 88 in the U.S. Air Force. I believe. I believe in in America. I believe the way it was founded. I believe it was founded on all that stuff. We can talk about it. But the truth of the matter is, hey, I'm part of another kingdom, the kingdom of God, right? I'm going to shine my light. I'm going to try my best to shine my light. 
I'm going to try everything I can do to preach. I got to watch it. Got to preach spitting. I want to do spitting preaching here on out. Maybe I just got to stand back a little bit farther. But do some spitting preaching here on out, you know? On fire preaching. My life, I believe, I just believe this. Just pray, would you just, just, I'm getting a little older. Would you just kind of have grace for your path? I believe Peru is just ahead of us. They're recovering just a little bit. I believe something great is going to happen in Peru. Hey, and I believe something great is going to happen here. I'm just telling you, I just. And that's my world right now. I'm just telling you. And I'm telling you, God is about to do the amazing. God is not going to leave us orphans. He's not going to leave us or He's not going to leave us in this crazy world, not come to us, you know what I mean? And, and show us his goodness. And, and hey, that's what he's going to be and what he's going to do. We're talking tonight out of Daniel. I decided I'm going to pick the, the hardest, this might be the hardest chapter in the Bible. Daniel chapter 7. Ready? We're going to try to stay in Daniel here for these 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The hardest chapter is on Wednesday night. We're going to go after these deep prophetic things. You know, Daniel, they say Daniel, they know the exact year that Daniel was taken to Babylon. Okay? And he was in Babylon. They know the exact year because it's the first year Belshazzar, king of Babylon. They know, so they know exactly the year it was. You know, they know the year that, that Judah fell. They know the year that Belshazzar. So they're saying it's 50 years. I got some of these big names here. How do you say that first name? I never can say it right. It's a big... Sennacherib was, was, a, a, was a, an Assyrian king, right? He's the one that wiped out Israel, and he came down on Judah. And you remember he cut them off? He had 185,000 men. He cut them off, and, uh, and he just was waiting them out. And they were starving to death. They were eating. It said they were eating their animals. They were eating each other's children. It was awful, terrible. And Isaiah prayed, and, and the, the king at the time was um, Hezekiah. And they prayed, and at one point, uh, one point, Isaiah says, this time tomorrow, food will be cheap, is what he says, basically. And that, how do you say that guy's name? Sennacherib, okay. And Sennacherib, hey, thought he'd just wait them out, they'd soon give up. And the Lord sent a death angel into the camp. The next day, two lepers walk out there, Right? You know, you've been reading your Bible, right? Two lepers, what do they, what they do? They come back to town with, with food on their mouth, right? They come back going, blah, 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 blah. they said, where'd you get that food? Out there in the Assyrian camp. What? Yeah, they're all dead. Look, I got bags of food here. What? They all bust out there. And we know the year on that. Nebuchadnezzar. I'm telling you, that's Assyrian. Nebuchadnezzar was Babylonian. Belshazzar was the end, the very end of the Babylonian kingdom. Remember the handwriting on the wall? Right? And the and reason why I'm showing you, I'm showing some, some of this history so you just know somebody. We're, we're dealing with this period of time in the first year of Belshazzar. See it right there? So we're dealing with this here. Cyrus defeats Babylon and he allows them to go back after seven years of captivity. Alexander the Great. Okay, we can skip some of that. But there's the kingdoms. Hey that led up to the birth of Jesus, the Roman kingdom there at the end, okay? And the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Babylon, Daniel had a dream, visions of his head, of his head while on his bed. He could write poetry too. Then he wrote down the dream telling the facts, the main facts. What we got going on? We know the year of the king. Hey, yeah? Daniel has a dream, and he writes it down, and it gets complicated, okay? And I will tell you that I'm no brainiac, but I will tell you the conventional teaching, and I don't agree. Most of the time in the scripture, most of the time in the scripture, Something's orthodox teaching, meaning it's the general, the standard teaching of the scripture. You know what I mean? And 
Most people believe a certain way about these verses, but I happen to believe a little bit differently, and I'll talk to you about that as we go along. But he writes down those facts, okay? And Daniel spoke, saying, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. And that day, the great sea was the Mediterranean Sea. Hey, and, and I'm, I just want you to know, as we approach the time of the end, America's not too much in the picture okay Daniel's having a revelation of the time of the end where's all this going to play out at the four winds are stirred up in heaven stirring up the great sea okay America out of the picture America had a season I'm just telling you a season and in that season we did great and amazing things I will tell you, maybe I shouldn't tell this, Keith. Can I tell this? We're very excited to announce, I think, the biggest month we ever had in mission giving. Is that true or not? The biggest month we ever had, right? It was big, man. It was big. I'm telling you, for those missionaries who got some of that, it was big. Uh, let, me, let me just ask. Cynthia and Tom, pretty good? Wasn't that amazing? We're very thankful. We don't, now listen, let me do this. We don't tell people we don't tell missionary who gave right we hold all of your giving i don't know who gave i don't know who in the world gave but some people gave related to mission stuff amazing okay i don't know just a couple people know they keep that very secret we don't know so they can't even say thank you because they don't know so you're saying right okay right beautiful wonderful Jamie Ketchell, you got anything to say? Wonderful and amazing, right? My daughter in Peru's going, please tell me, please tell me who sent that money. I'll come up there, I'll just hug their, I'll hug their neck until their head pops off. If you're doing missions work and you're just trying to make it, hey, and, and, and the church is doing beautiful things like that, America has done these great things. America has missionaries all over the world. America has these amazing churches and communities all over the place. This is an amazing church, right? But as time moves along, I'm just trying to tell you, America had its place, and its place was to be the Israel for 2,000 days. The people of God, the people who spread the word of God, nearing the end of days, Right here it is, right here. I'm telling you, Daniel has a view of the very end of time here in Daniel 7. And he says, well, this gets stirred up around the Mediterranean. You see it? You see it right there? Behold, the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came up out of the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion, had eagle's wings. Now... Some people say, the, how do I want to say it? The ordinary teaching on this is, this is exactly the same explanation as Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2 is where Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, and it's of this great statue, head of gold, chest. I, I've never, there isn't even the same amount of, there's four beasts here, right? There's five kingdoms in the, it never made sense to me that anybody would say Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 are the same. Never made sense to me. They do it all the time. You go out there and look, you're going to see this comparison. Well, you know, Alexander the Great and the Persian king and this kid. The four winds stir up the Mediterranean, around the Mediterranean. It's the last day's prophecy. Okay? And these, these symbols are symbols of nations in the very last days, okay? And it had a lion. Now, who's the symbol of a lion? Uses Great Britain. It had eagle's wings. Who's the eagle's wings? And I watched till the wings were plucked off, meaning we weren't attached to them anymore, right? And it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and, and man's heart was given to it. So America's been 
America hasn't been this country that's been warmongering or trying to... America's had a heart of compassion for the whole world. Wish I could sing that old song that was out in the 70s about the Canadian guy singing about how wonderful... Um, nobody thinks America, but it's been wonderful over the years. It was a Canadian guy talking about... What's how that song go? What was the name of that song? In any event, is this idea how America helps in the floods and America helps in the famines and America helps in the earthquakes and America helps in the tsunamis and America's had this wonderful heart and, and we help all over the world. Listen to me. What they want you to think is that's the head. They want you to think that that lines up with in, in the traditional teaching that that's the head of gold, which is Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, if you compare it to, to Daniel chapter 2. But I always look at that and go, how in the world is that attached? So I've never believed the traditional teaching that people have out there that Daniel 2 and Daniel 7 are the same vision. Why would God... This is a vision of the very end of time. If people are afraid. I'm not all that afraid to teach you what I think it is. I'm just not afraid to teach you what. Right there is Great Britain and America. Are we present in the last days? Yeah. Are we, do we have a heart like a man? Yeah. Eagles' wings. Eagles' eagles and eagles' wings are the teaching in the Bible about America. You see it again in Revelation. You see a couple of times where eagles wings and, and some stuff. That's America in the New Testament. Okay? The se and suddenly another beast, the second beast like a bear. Who's the bear? Russia's a bear. It was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. So first beast, Daniel sees second beast has three ribs uh, and it would rise and devour much flesh. If there is an aggressive country on the planet right now they just invaded Ukraine they've invaded some other it's, it's, it's Russia, they're the ones but I want to show you something here, go to the next map you're going to laugh you know what's on this map? Armenia we were talking about Armenia today we're talking about Calvinism, Armenianism and I said, I'm an Amen Armenian. And he said, there's a country like I said, I said, no, there's not a country like that. And there is right here. Okay, for Russia to come down, hey, on Israel, there's three little baby countries, three little ribs sitting here. Okay? It's the country of Georgia, Armenia, and Az Azerbaijan. And then once they cross through there, they're buddies with, hey, they're buddies with either Syria, Turkey. Those are the three ribs. Now, I'll tell you something. When you see Russia, you're going to come back to Mark and say, you're a genius. You're going to come back and say, that pastor is a genius. Nobody else is preaching that. Pastor Mark is preaching that. There it is, okay? Russia will, okay. Is anybody going to mess with Trump? Was anybody going to move with Trump in power? Is somebody going to move with Biden in power? In fact, can I go a little bit farther? I always thought, always thought, you know, Trump was working these peace treaties. The big, big thing we still have to have before the Lord comes is a peace treaty. I'm telling you. Because the Antichrist, when he comes, will agree with an existing treaty. You hear me? We have to have a peace treaty, hey, to build a temple. Okay? And I thought, oh, man, Trump's starting to work these peace treaties. It's awesome. It's a man. He's doing it good. With Israel, can you, with Saudi Arabia, you know, all these, countries, all these Muslim countries are working. Can you believe it? Trump's going to be the guy that gets us this peace treaty. You know what's going to get us a peace treaty? When Iran starts acting out, and America doesn't put it, put her back in its pl in her place, these other countries are going to say, "Hey, we better align ourselves with others because it could get a little feisty over here." Hey, and there's going to be a peace treaty, just like we thought. There's going to be a peace treaty 
in Israel, listen to me, and, and the United States isn't going to be in the middle of it. And the reason why is we're going to go back to an Iranian arms agreement. Okay, now you, you watch, you watch. When Russia takes out those three little countries, hey, and we get a peace treaty, you better have your spiritual bags packed. I'm just telling you that right now. And you're going to be running back to this church saying, Mark, you were right. I'm going to say, yeah, I know. How does a bear... Go to, uh, I'm jumping ahead. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, 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 down. We're selling some slides. Go down, down. Right, whoa, 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 whoa. So, people, this is Daniel 2. People say, the, the normal teaching is, that the lion represents this head of gold. The bear represents this. In fact, go to the next slide. Yeah. <laughs> this is my little commentary on a slide. This is an internet slide. What they do is they say Daniel 2 Daniel 7, Daniel 8, and Daniel 11, 12 are all the same vision. And I'm going, you're nuts. You're crazy. And I, would, I put on there the Bible for dummies class. I put no way, no way. Daniel 2 was the future world empires. We get that, right? Babylon, Mesopotamia, Persia, Greece, Rome, this divided kingdom. That, that, okay, that was Daniel 7 is the nations at the time of the end. That's, this is Mark's commentary. Daniel 8 is the rise of the Antichrist. Now, you, you know Daniel's doing this 500 years before Jesus, right? Plus 2,000. So, I'm just, I, I happen to be, uh, Chris Ball, where's Chris Ball? Is she in here? Where's Chris Ball? Did she say hi? Oh, hi, Chris, right there. You're over there. I was looking for you over there. Did we pick these Daniel verses because of today's events? We had these picked, and we've been working on these for a little while, right? So we picked these verses. That it's not because of today's events. Where, but I'm trying to tell you, hey, that Daniel 7 is what's going to unfold. Daniel 7 is going to unfold. You all hear me? You hear me? I know we're all a little bit in shock. I know we are. I know. Can't believe it. Prayed for God, right? Prayed for God to do. Hey, he'll do. Don't worry. He'll do. What, what have I said for years? On my very worst day, what's God doing? The most amazing things in my life. Okay, go back, back, back. I don't have that clicker, so back, 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 back. Whoa, other way. Yeah. Who am I talking to? Is that Betty? So if it's Deb, I'll talk nice. Talking to Betty? Thanks, Betty. A bear, there you go. Devour much flesh. And I looked in there was another, like a leopard, which had its, its back four wings of a bird. The best economy and four heads and dominion was given to that. The best economy in Europe right now is what? I got something I picked up. I ate a taco before I came down here. What's wrong? Here. You'll be laughing when all this comes true. I'm playing. You two girls over there, three girls right there. You better straighten up. And after this, I looked and there was another like a leopard. Four wings. You know, Adolf Hitler was the third Reich, the third head. There's going to be a fourth rising. The strongest economy in Europe is Germany. I don't know if you know this. Hey. How do I do this? In Revelation, there was that, that beast they worshipped at. 
what church was that? Sardius, Thyatira? And they talk about that Christian man. Tom, help me here. That Christian man, Cynthia, then forget Tom, Cynthia. The Christ, <laughs> he was killed. It's Sardius or Thyatira, one of those in Revelation. Anyhow, which one is it? But they moved that altar to Berlin. The one altar, the one demonic altar, hey, that we know of in Revelation has been disassembled and reassembled in Berlin. There's a satanic, oh, come on. It's Revelation, I can look it up. It's Revelation, probably chapter 2 or 3. What? Pergama. Is it Pergama? One of those churches. In any event, Germany, right here. They're going to be a strong nation. They're going to be a rising economic nation. Let me tell you something. By the way, as, as nations rise up, Britain, Great Britain, just did this Brexit thing, right? So they've exited. They're on their own. This lion is on its own. You know what I mean? It used to be grouped in the European Union. It's... I saw in the night vision, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceeding strong, and had a huge, a huge iron teeth, and it was devouring and breaking in pieces and trampling residue of its feet. It was different from all the other beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. This is the kingdom of the Antichrist is coming. So I'm trying to tell you, these are the four kingdoms. This is what's going to happen. Hey, as this thing unfolds, okay? Kingdom of the Antichrist. It's terrible. It has ten horns. Remember in Daniel, in Daniel chapter 2, there were ten toes on his feet. I do believe that the final kingdom and this kingdom is the same. It's the kingdom of the Antichrist. Catching me? Hope I'm not boring you. It was considered the horn. There was another horn, a little one, coming up among them. Before them were three, uh, were three of the first horns plucked out by, by its roots. And there, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth speaking pompous words. That's the Antichrist. So ten, there's ten horns, and out of three comes this one. This little horn pops three of them out, and it becomes the horn that has the big mouth. Now, the big debate's always been, is that ten countries that align themselves? And then the Antichrist comes out of three? Or is that ten divisions now of the world? People are starting to say it's ten economic, because there's going to be a big economic crash. If, the, if we're divided into ten zones, economically in the world... Hey, and North America was one of those zones. I, I don't know, but the Antichrist has come to come up out of three of them. Can I, can I just, can I show you something? Can you go back to that map real quick? Can I go back? No, back to the other map. Back right there. This is Africa. This is Asia, and that's Europe. And the first verse we read was, and the wind stirred up. If we're in, if we have ten economic zones, and one comes up out of three, but the, the, I almost want to say the scripture gives us a hint that it's this swirling that's going to come up out of the Mediterranean, which is an Asian, an African. I know it sounds crazy because they're big continents. But it sounds like to me an Antichrist is going to pop up among these. Or it could be ten European nations. But I don't think so because it, it talks about the Antichrist really ruling over the whole earth. So when I read, I'm, I'm just telling you, there's stuff I see I have a trained eye. That's a joke. But when the first verse says, the Lord stirs up around the Mediterranean, 
and we're talking about 10 possible economic zones, hey, and the stirring is around the Mediterranean, this is Africa, Asia, Europe. Does a, an Antichrist figure pop up out of that? We know there's a king in the north, and we know there's a king in the south, and, and, and the king in the north is probably Putin because it's north of, hey, and there's a king in the south, it'll be some kind of Arab leader, and they have some back and forth. Can I, I don't want to shock your whole world, but Matthew 25, 10 virgins, right? 10 virgins, y'all hear me, hear me, hear me. I got some insight on this. I've just been studying for a lot of years. 10 virgins, right? An event happens. And, and five of the virgins that had wasted their oil run to the other five and they say, give us some oil, we're out, we need oil. And the five that have oil say, we don't have enough for us and you. Now, I don't know what you think that sounds like, but it sounds like a great big economic crash to me. And while they're out trying to get oil, the Lord comes, right? Listen to me. Half the people who think they're ready not ready. It doesn't mean they're lost forever. There's a great number, a giant number, hey, saved in the tribulation. You know where I usually go with that next, don't you? Where do I go next? What? What is it? What is it? My wife will be here to lead you to the Lord, okay? That's what we normally do right there. Tim has said Bev will be leading worship. I made that up. I did. I did. I made that up. Connor saying Reagan will be here. In fact, all of us good guys will probably leave and our wives. No, I'm I got in real trouble right there. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please. So an Antichrist is going to rise up. He's going to speak. He's going to be a big mouth. Hey, hey. You laughed at me earlier. I got you back. Here you go. It's a Christian. I turned the... No, I didn't. And I watched till the, till the thrones were put in place. Now, doesn't it sound like Daniel's having a dream, the Mediterranean stirred up, hey, and, and there's these nations, and there's ten nations, and there's one Antichrist comes out of that, and then I just kept... I believe so often God gives us stuff in order. Why would God give us a dream out of order? Right? So I just kept watching until the Ancient of the Days was, was seated. You know who that is? Hey, and the multitudes were before him. You know what that says to me? The church showed up. You know what happens after the man with pompous words pops up? You know, Thessalonians says that the, the son of perdition will be revealed, okay? So we'll get to see him, but we won't have to live under his reign. You all understand what I'm saying? I can show you all these verses. So you'll see him. Okay, until I watched that the thrones were replaced in the ancient days and seated, his garments were white as snow, his hair, his head was pure wool, his throne was fiery flame, a wheel, a burning fire. And, and I put this other set of Daniel 7, Isaiah 6, Ezekiel 1, Revelation 4. All has a description of the throne of God. And it's all, all has a similar description. A fire stream was in a thousand. Oh, right. Uh, uh, it came forth before it. A thousand, thousand ministered to him. Population in heaven after the rapture? 
Now that's of every generation. That's of, you catching me? We're going to stand in the biggest crowd. We're all going to be in one space. Um, 100 million people. That's better than the Lakers on their best, you know, that's better than, that's, that's more than, than, than Dallas Stadium can hold. You see that? So a thousand, thousand, a thousand, thousand, oh, 10,000 times 10,000 stood for him. There it is, 10,000 times 10, And the court was seated and the books were open. And I watched it became the sound of Papa's words. Who's that? Antichrist. And I watched till the beast was slain. So he, he watches through the whole seven year period until the beast is finally, right? And given to a burning flame. And the rest, as for the rest of the beast, and their dominion was taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. What that's talking about is the other set, now there's seven kingdoms. That's a complicated verse right there. That they have a little bit, that the Antichrist, it looks like, gets taken off and they're still. And I watched the night vision. Behold, one was like a son of man coming in the clouds from heaven. He came to the ancient, and they brought him near before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom. And, and all the people of the nation tribes serving him, and his dominion was everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom was the one which shall not be destroyed. Catching all this? I didn't know that it would be as relevant as it is when we picked it. All of a sudden, there it is. Daniel's grieved in the spirit. The visions the troubled, head troubled me. And I came near to those who stood by and asked the truth, what the truth was. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. So, second half of this chapter... There's an interpretation. The great beast are four, are four, which are four, are four kings which rise out of the earth. The saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever. Even ever and ever. You see that? Next slide. The conclusion. This is funny. The conclusion here is four kingdoms will come up. Hey. And they'll go down. Hey, and the saints will, 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 the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess it forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Man, I don't know if I got any people here excited at all. You see a junky day, a, a real bummer day like today in America. Hey, and then you see a verse like this, and the saints will possess it all forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And you just go, it's going to be okay. Right? We have plenty of things that we're going to see unfold that are very ungodly. But the God of this, this world is not the God we serve. Right? So after four kings pop up, I'm telling you, four kingdoms are going to pop up. You hear me? They're going to be knocked down, and the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom and possess it forever. And then Daniel says, um, you know, that, that should have been the end of it right there. And Daniel says, could you tell me about that fourth beast again? See that? I wish to know more about the fourth beast, which was different from the others, exceedingly dreadful. You know, this is written 2,500 years ago. It, if, in a dream, if you saw one so much worse than all, he's going, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, I don't know what happened. The ten horns that was on his head, three fell namely to the horn, and the eyes and the mouth were spoken. Pompous words, these appearance was greater than his fellows. And I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints. Well, okay, people go, that means the Christians are going to be here through the tribulation. L listen to me. The church is taken out at the rapture. But people come to the Lord in the tribulation, and they are called saints. There's no reference to the church after the Lord 
takes the church out. Does that make sense? So at a certain point, when you know you're dealing with tribulation period things, this, the Bible's talking about saints and not the church anymore. You hear me? And the horn, let me do it this way. There's a verse that says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But once the church is taken out, look. And, I was watching, and the, the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. That means that once the church is taken out, hell can't overtake the church. You hear me? But once the church is taken out, hell is going to prevail over individual saints. And many of them in the tribulation will lose their life. Until the ancient days came and judgment was made in the favor of the saints of the Most High. Until judgment day, that's exactly what Revelation teaches. The saints in the tribulation have trouble. The church, hey, prevails. The saints in the tribulation have trouble. Until judgment day, right there, was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. He's talking about tribulation saints. You got all that? I'm over time. I don't know what happened there. It's like my battery. You can read that on your own. Subdue three kings and so much of what we've been talking about. Look at this. Look at this. And, it's, and he shall intend to change the times and laws. This is the Antichrist. We are moving into a season where government, hey, is going to begin to encroach in all kinds of stuff. You hear me? Government's going to begin to change basic, fundamental things. And the Antichrist, when he comes, is going to do it much more. For time, time, and half a time. That's three and a half years. Come on, switch, switch. And uh, the court was seated, and they uh, consumed and devoured for it forever. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Right there, the last line will quit. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is the end of the count. For As for me, Daniel, my thoughts were greatly troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept this matter in my heart. a whole chapter. That's pretty good. Daniel 7, one of the hardest chapters in the Bible, unless, hey, unless you have a brilliant pastor that can just explain it to you. Okay, forget that. Hey, those are the things to come. Daniel chapter 7. See me? Got me? Father, we thank you for time together. We're not going to talk politics. We're going to talk Jesus. We're going to talk spiritual things. Is our country in trouble? Hey, not talking about that. Let's talk about the Lord. Because we inherit the kingdom forever. We inherit the kingdom forever. Lord, I don't know where we're at in terms of time, but I know we're close to the end of time. I can see what Daniel was teaching. I can see it on the horizon. The nations that were mentioned in these, this chapter are present now. Lord, awaken us, just awaken us to where we are. Cause us to realize that the saints inherit the kingdom forever. The world, the governments, the dollar, many things are going to fail. But our hope's in you, Jesus. You've never, ever let the righteous be forsaken. So, Lord, our hope's in you. God, be with our nation. God, I pray that our eyes are awoken to spiritual things. We started in you, God. Let us finish in you. Pray for a renewed strength, church, Lord. That we don't become the Laodicean church. And that we're not lukewarm, God, but we're on fire for you. So awaken us to the day we live in. We see what's ahead, Lord. Let us live for you now. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. Glad you came. A hard chapter. We got through it.